and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost? to see if there is enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlooker should laugh at him and say, This one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king, marching into battle, would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Recently, my nephew Isaac graduated from West Point Academy and is serving in the U.S. Army as a tanker. Those are the servicemen in the tank division. So someone sent me this joke. A cowboy who had just moved to Wyoming from Texas walks into a bar and orders three mugs of beer. He sits in the back of the room, drinks a sip out of each one in turn. When he finishes them, he comes back to the bar and orders three more. The bartender approaches and tells the cowboy, you know, a mug goes flat after I draw it. It would taste better if you bought it one at a time. The cowboy replies, well, you see, I have two brothers. One is an airborne ranger and the other is a Navy SEAL, both serving overseas somewhere. When we all left our home in Texas, we promised that we would drink this way to remember the days that we drank together, the three of us. The cowboy becomes a regular at the bar and always drinks the same way, ordering the three beers. One day, he comes in but only orders two months of beer. All the regulars take notice and fall silent. When he comes back to the bar for a second round, the bartender says, I don't want to intrude on your grief but I want to offer my condolences for your loss. The cowboy looks puzzled at first, and then suddenly smiles and says, Oh no, everything is fine. It's just that my wife and I joined the Baptist church, and I had to quit drinking, but it hasn't affected my brothers. <laughs> Jesus said, what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? In other words, a whole Christian enterprise can be envisioned as a great military campaign against sin and Satan whose demonic legions basically outnumber us Christians 20,000 to 10,000. Our enemies, therefore, are not worldly forces or nuclear missiles or drone attacks. Rather, as St. Paul taught the Ephesians, for we are not contending, fighting, against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness. And since that is the nature of this war, St. Paul goes on to tell the Ephesians to put on the spiritual armor that Christians should rely on. 
the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. That is, St. Paul, like Jesus, saw the Christian life as essentially a spiritual war zone. And while to be sure Jesus has won the war, the battle for each Christian soul still rages on. My friends, I would suggest to you that not only the scriptures, but also the sacraments underscore this image of spiritual warfare. What does that mean? Well, each of the seven sacraments can be given a kind of military interpretation. For example, take baptism. When a baby is baptized, he is first anointed with oil on the chest. Why? Well, in ancient times, soldiers and warriors had their entire bodies anointed with oil before the next day's battle. The oil, you see, symbolized divine strength so they could have confidence in victory, knowing they had God's power on their side. Or the sacrament of confirmation. You know, back in the old days, the bishop used to slap the face of the person to be confirmed. Do some of you old timers remember that? The gesture was a test of readiness to suffer as a soldier in the coming contest of faith. The Holy Eucharist is essentially our military rations, commonly in the army called MREs, meal ready to eat. And communion kind of tastes about like that, an MRE. A couple who has received holy matrimony and been married for more than a week knows that a wedding sometimes feels like warfare. Ask any couple if a bed has ever become a battlefield. The sacrament of holy orders puts a man in a rank as an officer in the Lord's army. The Pope is a spiritual general, and the altar servers are the privates. Sorry, guys. I often compare the religious orders, the Carmelites, the Jesuits, the Benedictines, the Franciscans, to the special forces, like the Airborne Army, Rangers, or the Navy Seals. The whole church, you see, is a spiritual army that has been mobilized for war. The sacraments of anointing of the sick and confession are designed to heal us when we are wounded in battle. Pope Francis wrote that the church is a field hospital after battle. Do you remember that popular television show called MASH? I grew up watching it. That stood for Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. And that is essentially what we priests do when we hear confessions or go to the hospital or homes and anoint the sick. We're doing spiritual surgery on wounded warriors. In other words, Christians don't have to die on the battlefield because a mass unit in the sacraments of healing helps you to recover. C.S. Lewis picked up on this war zone imagery when he wrote in his classic book called Mere Christianity. When you go to church, you are really listening in to the secret wireless from our friends. That is why the enemy is so anxious to prevent us from going. He does it by playing on our conceit, our laziness, and our intellectual snobbery. My friends, that is why we go to church. We put on a spiritual armor. We are fed with military rations. We are tested for battle. And we are healed when we are wounded. If you don't go to church, you are essentially walking onto the battlefield naked. But when we put on the armor of God, our smaller Christian forces with only 10,000 troops can gain the victory over Satan's imposing army of 20,000 troops. The Christian life is a war zone, and my nephew Isaac is not the only soldier who's preparing for battle. Praise be Jesus Christ.
And as our authority, we be prayed and profess our faith together, saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The God is not a man. Constantly with the Father, through many and all things, through many. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and promised to die. He suffered at the most very, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He is ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Great of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on the baptism for the forgiveness of the sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To follow Jesus with Christ and every faith, we now place our knees, hopes, and dreams in his hands, believing that the Lord will grant us what we truly need.
of sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously granted through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, to thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end that we acclaim. Saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May, make, may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spouse, your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your life. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
I think I need more from you, Chris. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Thank you. 